Chani Oliveira. I'm from, I'm from Porto Alegre, uh, the main city of the southest state in Brazil. So I'm from the south <laughs> and I, I live in a, uh, I was living in this place where there is very few opportunities to, to work on projects and to finance projects. So after some years, I moved to Sao Paulo and in 2004, I did my first short and in 2008, I did the second short in 2009, I, I finished a first draft of the screenplay that went to Purdue Your Suit. And in 2010, we went to Purdue Your Suit. Great. So tell me what that project was and why you decided to go to Purdue Your Suit and how you came to hear about Purdue Your Suit. Um, well, um, this project was called in Portuguese, Mulher do Pai. In English, literal, literally translated would be woman of the father or a father's woman. Uh, and in Perduria Sud, this was the title, woman of the father. Later, it changed to Nalu on the border. When we release it in English, this was the title, but in Portuguese, we, keep, we kept uh, Mulher do Pai. And it was a, a story about a teenager who needs to take care of her blind father after her grandmother died. So this man never wanted to be a father. He don't have a connection with her as a father. And they will need to learn how to live together in a house that is very isolated in the countryside of the south of Brazil, in an area where the cattle ranching culture is the main culture. And so it's very male centered and this girl don't have much opportunities. We shot in a real village of only 200 people that live there to work for the cattle culture. And, um, uh, there, there was one school where um, the young people don't have any other uh, uh, leisure um, activities or parties, nothing. It, it was only the school. And by night, they, they had to stay at home, you know, with, with their parents. So it's a, it is a place uh, with many restrictions. And you have that background on the film. So it deal a lot with this sexist culture, but having a very fragile man as the center of the story. So how this man who really is really in need of the woman help, uh, how he, he develop. And this girl needs to decide how to, what to do in the end of the school, if she goes to another city to study, or if she stays taking care of her, her father. So this was the story. And um, Aletea Selong, the producer, um, she was aware that these international opportunities could help our career with the project. So she researched about many opportunities, and we submit to uh, some of them and first one was Produrio Suit and we make it and after we went to Berlinale Talent. She was selected to the talent project market so she took her project there and with this project uh, we had these two uh, workshops and it was really really great for our development and connections uh, after the production was done. So that was in 2010, and that meant that you needed to submit a script in, or a treatment in English, right? Yeah. So I'm interested to know um, how that was for you, because presumably you had done your, your first draft in Portuguese. So how did you go about then 
translating your idea into English and and even more than that how did you incorporate the input that you got in English on this English draft into a film that was to be in Portuguese well uh, technically it's always a mess for me you know to do that because I'm I work with a professional translator who has uh, this knowledge in literature, in, in plays, in films. So she could do a good version of my script. And sometimes I also have ideas for the, the Portuguese writing by looking how she wrote, you know, by looking at her version. So that, that's something good. They, there, there is a bit of exchange. I, I need to improve some things to be uh, better understood in English. So I think this is a good process, but it's, it's very, um, it's a challenge because um, I liked to review everything in English. So I write everything, I, I, I mean, I, I read everything. I, I gave her inputs and suggestions, changed this, this word, why this word, why that word? So I'm, I like to participate in the translating process. And the problem is when we went to produce suit and we, we receive inputs, and I always show my screenplay to a new person that came to, to the, the, the crew. I like to have inputs. So I, I always, when I change one version, I need to update in English and Portuguese. So this is a, a big work, you know, to work with two screenplays and check to uh, update everything. So now I'm working on my third project now, and I'm on that point, you know, I need to update because I write in Portuguese. I, I don't like to write in English. I, I write firstly in Portuguese and then I translate. So I need to do and update, do and update. So it, that, that's a challenge. And in, in the second short, in the second feature that was released in France, I need a, a French version. So I needed to update English, French, and Portuguese. So this is a big work, you know, it's a, it's a big amount of work. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a huge amount of work and also, you know, really challenging because it's not just a matter of changing words, but really needing to draw upon cultural and literary references that make sense to a particular context. Okay, so presumably you and your producer had um, aims before you went. What were your aims? What were your objectives before you went? Improving the screenplay, firstly, because we were really in the first draft, you know, and we, we knew it will be better if we receive uh, inputs from someone that were, was not involved. Because for us, for me, when I'm too involved, I'm, I, feel, I feel attached to things that are not necessary. And I'm very open to listen that it's, it's not necessary. So I, I like to, to have different opinions and I feel what touch my heart and what don't touch my heart. And then I decide to change or not. So this was the first aim at Produjo Sud and it was really good. And for Aletea as a producer, it was a great opportunity to meet people that could could send us some light, you know, during the process, because sometimes we have some doubts that we don't know who ask about. And if we had, for example, Claire uh, was the producer, the French producer that worked with us in, in the Produrio Sud workshop. She became a friend to whom we can ask, to, to, we can write and ask things. And she sin sincerely answer us. And sometimes are um, things that only a more experienced person know, you know, how to relate with sales agents, how to relate with distributors, how to relate with the theaters in France, the 
and how to relate with budgets in co-productions. And there are uh, small things that only during the practice came up. We, we can't learn everything in the workshop, you know, because it's a first moment for us to receive the, the, the knowledge. But when we start doing new things came up. So for Aletea, it was not only good for receiving inputs on budget, pitching, um, and things like that, but also to have this, this web of friendship, you know, that to be together, uh, make it happens. And of course, pitching is something very terrifying and it was very well worked for Aletea and for me during the, the workshop. And this is something we use every day until today. You know, this is something we learned there and it happened that uh, we need to improve, of course, in each situation, but the basics we learn there. And also there was a moment uh, that Brazil should create an um, interview atmosphere, you know, for us to, to feel how it is to answer questions to the audience and learn some questions to journalists. So that, that was good, you know, to, to feel, it, it was not something big, but it, it was an audience. So it, that first time talking in English with an audience about our film, uh, it, it's something that is terrifying at the first time. But on the second time, we already had that experience, you know, so that moment was really good for me to, to in, this, in this sense of to be prepared for the real world, you know. So it sounds as though um, you went in there with certain expectations and hopes, um, mainly for you around getting input on the script. Um, and and for your producer getting some know-how and that in in the respects that you've spoken about that it it exceeded the, that those hopes in 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 to a degree in the sense that um, there was a mentoring relationship that went on beyond the workshop now what about in terms of coming back to your original hopes did you did were those met did you get the input you needed on your script did you um was the input delivered in a way that was helpful and useful to you um did you find yourself being pushed around in ways you didn't like or was it a, a productive and and nurturing experience yes there is a very funny story about that i will talk about it but let me just add something about the the previous question about the things that exceeded the expectations. Uh, I have to say that to be able to live together in a place that is not our place is something that really enrich the experience because filmmaking is not only about techniques, it's not only about uh, aesthetic, it's, it's about relationships. So not, I have many good memories, not only about the workshop, but everything that happened when we were outside the building of the workshop, you know, to walk around in the streets of Nantes, to go to the restaurants in Nantes and talk about the world, you know, and talk about the culture of other people. This is something that really affects the way we make films. Because if you do a film only look into your reality, it will be, I think it will reflect on the result. And it will reflect on the way it communicate with audience. I think if you, if you have that experience of communicate and to conflict with other cultures, you know, and you need to develop a conversation with people that are very different from you, with a very different background, this made us better filmmakers. So this is another thing that was very, very important in the experience of Rodrigo Sud. And about the my personal aim as a writer, I, I have to say that I received 
many inputs from the consultants that changed my screenplay. For example, I, my film started from a point where uh, the, the grief, the mourning was starting. And then they told me, for the audience to feel better this feeling, it's better if you show the character that died. So I gave like one or two, three scenes, you know, with this character or more, four, doesn't matter, but I create this character and the audience could connect better with the feeling of mourning, the loss, how they miss this woman that died. So this is a main change and a very important change. And after that, there is this funny story that as the film talk about this relationship between the girl and the father, and the father is blind, so he needs to touch everything. And there is this uncomfort feeling that the father is touching the girl. And so sometimes uh, there are uh, some scenes where you create this uh, expectation, oh my God, what's going to happen between them? Because he's a young man, a beautiful young man, and she's a, 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 a beautiful young woman now, and they are kind of brothers. They're not father and, you know, so that, that's the confusion the film uh, brings. And, and then while we are talking with the, the, the producers, the, especially the, the French people that were in the workshop, we heard, I don't remember now who told, but it was a feeling we, we and a person spoke about it. And this French person told us, you should add more sex to your screenplay. And the people from uh, South Africa asked me, how are you going to shoot it? Because in our country, the girls are abused by their father. So if you have a father barely touching the girl, this is something that we can do that. So it was amazing to, to have this so different, so opposite point of views. And finally, we did not co-produce with African, we did not co-produce with French, but we co-produced with Uruguayans. <laughs> and now our, our film became an Uruguayan, Brazilian co-production, and they just embrace this ambiguity. And uh, so the film deals with this ambiguity. Nothing is too explicit, but it tells about the inner uh, mind of uh, you know, this inner feeling of confusion, typical of adolescence. So that was my goal. It was not having two sex and it was not being too worried about it. So <laughs> that was a re really great situation about how different cultures make us questions, you know? So even though I knew where I wanted to go, I needed to, I, I, at that moment, I needed to question myself where do I really want to go? And to who I want to talk to with this film, because this changed everything. How do you wrestle with that? How do you, you know, you were, you were mentioning before that it's enriching to bring an idea and to bounce it off different cultures. And each culture will have a different perspective on the way to go. But ultimately it means you cannot speak to all of the cultures at once. So how do you resolve that? Well, of course, the basic answer would be, I need to do something I believe. Uh, but this is like we say in Portuguese, chover no molhado, to rain in, in a, a wet place. Okay, this is obvious. I need to do something I believe. But it has um, reflections and we need to think on, uh, Implications. Implications, yes. For example, I am Brazilian. I, I, I know that Portuguese speaking films are not so welcome everywhere in the film business. So the main market we have is here, is Brazil, you know? So because we know 
we will sell the film here. We know we will distribute the film here, but we don't know where else the film will be distributed. So I try to always think uh, what will be um, what will be um, uh, connected to my beliefs and what I think my reality needs in these social questions, for example, you know? Um, it's, it's hard for me to make a film about a father that abuse his daughter because I don't want that, I don't want to promote that and I'm not talking about that. I'm, I'm, I was talking about this moment of discovering this father-daughter relationship. So it was more about affection. So if we are talking about affection, I want to, I need to be able to talk more about the woman uh, whole in this culture, in this sexist culture, the blind whole in this culture that don't have resources for those one with disabilities. I must be able to talk about that region that is a sexist place, but how to talk about them without hurting the people that welcome us to shoot there, you know? So I have my ethical problems to solve with my culture first. And if another cultures connect with us, great. But I think to be able to do that, we need to have also the universal topics well solved. So that's where I think Rodrigo Sud really helps to make it more universal. To point me what were the, um, the universal topics that connect with them. And this is something I ask them, why do you select my project? So I want to hear uh, what they have to say, what they like, what caught their attention. So uh, that's, that experience were, were great, was great for that too, to, to see how people from different countries would look to our film. So I start making it more conscious about how it could be received abroad. And we finally get a French sales agent and the film were more like to young audience. Our film went to generation session in Berlin Alley. So that was a, a great premiere. Uh, and I think it was a, a good start because I, I knew, well, for, for you to have an idea. When I released the film in Brazil, everybody was so tense so tense that a critic came to talk to me, an old guy, a very well-respected critic here came to me. Do you shoot the sex scene between the father and the girl? And you cut on the editing, right? Because people feel the tension and they were so nervous in Brazil, but abroad the film was made to adolescents, you know, to children, to, to teenagers. So we went to Generation and also to other film festivals that were focused on, on young youth culture. And um, well, it, of course, in other generalist film festivals too, but this first international premiere was in Generation, which is focused on youth. So this is sad because it portrays how we are late in deal with many things in Brazil. Here you've brought up two, two questions for me. The first is about, um, you know, given that decalage between cultures, how you take on board the advice of mentors who come from a culture other than your own and how you process that. The second is, um, it's really an observation. I'm interested to see, um, how going through the process and engaging with an international workshop and, and releasing your films internationally gives you even more material to reflect upon your own culture because you see the way it's received differently. So with the first question, it's, it's really looking at the mechanics of Produire au Sud, 
When someone gave you feedback on particular aspects of your script, you've given an example of, of how that was helpful to the structure, you know, to move the, some scenes of the father up to the front so that we would understand the morning. But what about situations where perhaps, um, you know, someone from outside your culture came in and said, you should do this. And it just felt like totally alien and, and inappropriate for what you, how did you deal with that cross-cultural um, working relationship at that point during the workshop? I always take notes and take home and think about it. It's something I don't, I don't tell myself, oh, this is not for me. No, I never do that. I embrace it and sleep with that, you know? I try to think and one month later, I rewrite the screenplay and then I read everything again because the things will touch me differently after a while. So I like to let it sleep and I will come back to it after a while. And then I see, yes, I think this connect to this and that and that and that. So uh, it was not something that was solved during the workshop. You, you get all that luggage and keep it and that helps to make your questions to yourself. And then I start to making this question. So every, every input, good or bad or different or similar to my culture helps me to make the questions. You know, I think writing is about that. It's about making questions and see if you can answer them. I see, yes, that you're saying that it, the to be stimulated is a productive process, whether or not you take you change in that direction or not, but to be stimulated to think um, yes. helps you move forward. Um, so it sounds like- Especially just, because, especially, especially because in Pradrilla Sud, we are not talking about only entertainment, right? We are talking about films that really put the finger on some wants, of our societies, you know, we have films that shake uh, some uh, sensitive topics. So I think that's really necessary, you know, to hear different voices. Mm. That's interesting. So it brings me to a question, because you also participated in Berlinale Talents, um, was it a similar experience? It was not a script lab. It was a project lab, and the, the producer went to, to this uh, co-production environment that Berlinale creates and received the talents to be in touch with the market. So the input for the screenplay, I felt was more entertainment orient oriented, you know? I, I, I don't know, but I felt that the person that uh, gave input to the screenplay was more from the market, you know? So, okay, uh, I we, we get some good uh, advices too, but it was different than talk to directors, writers, and, and people who really went deep to, to our project in Produro Sud. And, and, and there, uh, something that I, I took part in, EAVI, after that, I took part in Script Station in Berlinale too, after that with my third project. So I've, I have been to other situations and what is something that I saw only on Prodrillo Sud that the filmmakers with other projects get involved in the consultancy, you know? We receive these projects and we have time to talk a lot about. I've been also to um, When East Meets West uh, that had a workshop uh, oriented with Maya um, uh, consultants. And there they have this uh, similar model, but uh, one day or no, a two day experience. So it was uh, too fast to talk about all the projects. And in Producer Suit, we really felt like we also can be consultants. We also can uh, give our input or be uh, the first 
viewers, you know? So we felt like we were the first viewers of that project and we were able to make questions to our mates. And that was really, really good because it not only uh, create um, more questions, but create friendship. You know, we, we start to know better each other and we keep in touch with these fellows for our market life too, you know, also. So it was good. And um, did you go in with the idea of thinking that you would find a co-producer? I mean, so, I mean, were you, were you intending that this be a co-production from the outset or was it more about, you know, you said that you wanted some ideas for script development and to understand how it could be marketed to other parts of the world and so on, but um, I'm just wondering how, how important it was to you, that co-production aspect of things. I felt more like a place of learning how to co-produce and not like a place of finding a co-producer because we did not have many business meetings at that moment. So of course we've, we felt uh, some of that person could become uh, a partner uh, and we keep in touch with some, but it did not develop it. And after that, we had this, uh, this uh, opportunity of being in Bellinale, co-production market. And we realized, it, we were with Woman of the Father as talent inside the co-production market. And with my second picture, we were there again, but as a project selected, to co-production market. So in both situations, I can say we did like 50 meetings, you know, or 40 meetings to be able to connect with one or two, you know? So it's not easy because we have so many interesting projects in the world. And in I see in Prodrigio Sud, we had a few, meetings so i think in this proportion it will not be uh, able to create many uh, real co-productions because i think it's a matter of number we we really should have many different people uh, to be able to find someone who who is interested because each project is so specific and we need to find this specific person that is interested in our project, so uh, it, it it's about coming to an interest or a goal that is already there. For example, in my second feature, we find a French partner, but is a partner that was looking for that kind of project. So it it was only after many meetings in competition market we find that person. You know, so. I think it, that's why I, 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 I don't think Pudir Sud is a place for that because I think it will need more guests, many more guests to be able to do these meetings and maybe find more chances to connect. I understand. And I think the distinction you made is an important one about, it, you know, Pudir Sud taught you how to co-produce um, and it's an interesting- How to make meetings and how to make meetings because we, we had some meetings there and I think that's very important to have this feeling of, oh, maybe I, need, I, I can seduce this guy, maybe it is the one. So that's important to how to be able to prepare for, for that situations. And I think that was really good for producers. But if it, there is a goal of really making co-productions coming out from that, I think it's just a matter of number a matter of inviting different people from different places. For example, Germany that has funds, different funds with many different regions, you know? So don't invite only one German, but send Germans from the different funds they have, you know? So, but this is another structure. 
and it, and and then it, perhaps it would not be able to provide the same um, nurturing environment that gave you what you needed from uh, produire au sud. So maybe yes. they're two different things. Yeah. Yes, because we we have this safe environment. You know, we felt safe. We felt welcome. You know, in this environment, and when we are in the market, we felt very bad because you know you you feel you, you are very 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 small and you need to sell yourself and everybody is selling themselves around you so it's like um, a grocery store you know but it's i know it's necessary but uh, that bad feeling i i don't have i, I didn't have in producer i felt welcome and when i was leaving i cried because you know, it was a cry that uh, came from a feeling that, oh, I felt welcome here. Would I be welcome again somewhere else? Would I be able to make my film in Brazil? Would I, would I find, find financing for this film? I don't know, but here I believe it could happen. And that was something very important to make us keep walking, you know? That's beautiful. And I really relate to that because um, in 2018, I attended to observe um, what happened, you know, so I attended the workshops and I attended the beer drinking afterwards and I attended the meals and, and at the end, I also cried <laughs> because it was a moment of great authenticity and human connection. And I think for me, it sort of made me believe in humanity again, because all these people from around the world who are really looking for the same thing with an open heart and with goodwill. And um, I think there is a word that describes everything that is cinema. For Radio Sud is a cinematic experience because Cinema is about passion, is about art, is about reflection and connection with different cultures. So I think this is a moment where we can really experience cinema in all aspects of living cinema, not only making cinema. Mm -hmm.